Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All members of the council are present with the exception of council member Schofel. Thank you. No, we do not. Thank you for this opportunity. It's always nice. I'm a retired preacher, so when I get a chance to talk here, you guys have got your lunch? <laughs> okay. Well, in gratitude that enables us to receive, and it is gratitude that moves us to repay by returning the goodness we have been given. In its short, it's the gratitude that enables to be fully human that is bestowed to us from God. And having gratitude is not always easy, however, what makes life better. Please take time every day of your life and acknowledge the fact that you have a lot of gifts. And it's at this time we ask God to help us in our city council here, in the city of Santa Point, not only to say thank you, but to all of you officials, all you councilmen, the managers, staff, we thank you and appreciate you so very much. And for you people that are making the application tonight for Planning Commission, we just want to encourage you and we want to thank you for your time and your uh, talent and your experience to be portrayed here tonight. And uh, hopefully, the, whoever selected, you'll understand that the other ones that may not be, there's always a chance something up, coming up later on. God knows there's many tough days around here doing jobs in this wonderful city. But as for one, being a citizen here for over 27 years, it is the finest city that I've ever lived in. And we thank each and every one of you people city manager, the professional staff that work so hard, the commissioners, the parks, streets, harbors, and many other his features of historical, educational, and beauty they, that provide here in Dana Point. So we ask all of you here tonight to thank God. We're able to be grateful for all the blessings we have been bestowed upon just living and being a part of this community. And we ask for your presence, your hand upon us all, and we ask this in your name, amen? Thank you. Okay, we'll start our business meeting tonight with new business on the agenda. We have Planning Commission interviews. Adam Clerk, are these in the order of what, what, what they'd like to be interviewed? Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, we'd like to interview Stephen Moss. I'm, I'm sorry? I'm sorry, Mr. Moss is oh, out, of out of the country. country. Okay. So you can consider him uh, as you discuss who you're appointment wants to be but we do have the schedule in the order that you have it in the book okay, so that would be in my notebook correct thank you oh thank you you need a copy our first applicant is bob slapland is that how i pronounce it it's Bob Slapen, but I answered all that all Hi, the time. Thank you, Mr. Slapen. Do you have any questions from uh, council members? Does anyone have questions? How, how would you like to proceed? <coughs> well, why don't you just give us a brief overview? Of, I of your... moved to Dana Point in 1987. I have a rather diverse background in understanding the stakeholders in the community and trying to balance those interests. I've worked everywhere from, well, I've practiced law in Zambia, Japan, the United States, done tech work in San Diego where I built alliances with the San Diego business community as well as bringing in the various resources in the community. And what I look to is to try and look at a community, what, see what resources are needed and look at the stakeholders and try and bring about solutions that's, that at least compromise and satisfy the bulk of the stakeholders. And what, I, what I'm seeing 
in Dana Point, I like the progress I've seen over the past few years, um, but the head ones are still empty, which I remember from 1987 um, was an interesting problem. But I think certainly in the north end of town, we made some progress, and I think there's more opportunity in the south end. And the big area I see for opportunity both for the residents and the business community would be in the Capo Beach area for expansion and for bring, refreshing that area so it's a bit more attractive and desirable. But, I, but I'm accustomed to dealing with complex issues both economically, politically, and legally. That's it. Okay, any questions from council members? Sure. Mayor Pro Tem. Hi, good evening, Mr. Schlieffen. I, I see that you are a lawyer. What type of law do you practice? Or Depends which, which state of my career you want to talk about. Okay. Um, I think it, it's been a varied career. Um, I've done, when I first got out of law school, I did legal aid. I then defended political prisoners in the Republic of Zambia, where my principal client was the former vice president. Um, and then I went on to Japan, where I got a fellowship to study international trade law from the Japanese government, it's issued to two attorneys a year uh, from the United States. And there, and I, I worked for a major trading company, so the deals would be this thick, things like a contract for building a city, not a road, but a city in Saudi Arabia, um, doubling the size of the, the contract for doubling the size of the port of Taipei. Um, and then I've done a lot of work in technology and tech transfer. Uh, in my work in San Diego was more civic in that I was dealing with business and trying to develop the resources in the community to provide more jobs and attract the kind of talent we needed to develop the region. So it's a pretty varied career. Uh, it, it certainly sounds that way. I, the, the, the one follow-up question I have is regarding sort of land use uh, practice is, is the, the cities that you were involved in building and overseas. Well, certainly in Saudi Arabia, <laughs> when you're building an entire city, you're dealing with land, land use. In, in um, frankly, in, in San Diego, it, the land use was already pretty well determined. What we were looking at was what's the best way to maximize and balance the quality of life for the residents as well as build up the commercial side of it so that we could keep the tax burden off of the residents. Okay, thank you. Can you elaborate a little more on your uh, ten years on the San Diego Economic Development Council? Yeah, I worked with, that, that was an interesting group of people because it was from everything from utilities, the education, healthcare, biotech, all, all the various business interests. And what we did was look at, we studied what resources we had, what kinds of industries we might develop through those resources and maximize the, the effort by cooperating with the various industries. And when you get a lot of nonprofits in one room, it's not real easy to cooperate. It's a far more political situation than I guess most of you would imagine. But it, it's compromise and it's understanding what the needs of the community are. Further questions from council members? Well, thanks for, thanks for applying for this, Mr. Slapen. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned that you think the, the opportunity for expansion and, and businesses in Capo Beach. Uh, how do you feel about the town center and what's going on down there since that's a, an area that's actually going through a development period right now? 
and Capitol Beach is probably a couple years out since we mm -hmm. still have the planning to do. So how, no, I, why do you think it's Capitol Beach over Town Center and, and why would you? Focus? No, Town Center I, I think is making very interesting progress. And, and I think that's very important. I, I think of what, what assets do we really have control of versus what the county has control of? And where can we look at the assets that we control and how can we maximize those without having to continually go back and negotiate with the county on how we're going to maximize resources. I think that the town center, but if you look at, you know, it's the beach and the harbor as maximum assets. The other assets we have in Capo Beach are great freeway access, which we don't have anywhere else in town. And that freeway access could be, is a valuable thing that we don't have elsewhere and thought is how we might use that land and how we might take advantage of that access is I think an important thing to look at as, as an asset. Okay, thanks. Any further questions from council members? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just pretty general, and I'll be asking it of all the planning commission applicants. Do you have any objectives that you would like to accomplish or see while, while on the Planning Commission? No. I, 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 I would not presume to say that. I, I would say that, that if I looked at it, I see progress north of Golden Lantern. I would like to see more progress south of Golden Lantern. And I would like to see Capo Beach, something done with it to take advantage of an asset that the rest of the town doesn't have. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for applying. Okay. Thank you for your time. Mr. Roy, donor, please. Hi. Um, I guess to tell you a little bit about um, my experience with Dana Point, uh, I moved around a lot in uh, my corporate life, and uh, <clears throat> we visited our, my in-laws here in Dana Point, and I, I fell in love with Dana Point, and uh, we purchased a property uh, 40, 46 years ago, and uh, we were fortunate enough to be able to move here about 16 years ago, and I became a full-time resident here. Um, <clears throat> my um, corporate uh, experience uh, was with uh, Nortel Networks, a telecommunications company, uh, vice president for that corporation. Uh, I was uh, also the manager of Mobile's corporate real estate organization, uh, the president of the Dearborn Land Company, which is a, a subsidiary of Mobile's corporation, and uh, Montgomery Ward, uh, uh, which is a retail operation. And uh, it's no longer in business. Um, and uh, the manager of Mobile's uh, retail uh, sales operation. Um, <clears throat> during my professional uh, career, I was a, a board member and the uh, president of the uh, Global International uh, Global Development Program Research Council, and the uh, member of the uh, board of editors and the Journal of Corporate Real Estate the founding member and uh, past chief executive officer of uh, Cornet Global, which is uh, a organization of uh, corporate real estate executives. Um, <clears throat> as far as uh, community service, um, I was past board member and president of Miguel Shores Community Association, uh, the chair of the uh, committee to rebuild our community facility, uh, volunteer of the year in, in Miguel Shores in 2009, past chairman of the maintenance committee, uh, committee, uh, the chairman of the committee to uh, review all of our, and rewrite our rules, uh, the uh, chair of the uh, men's golf club, which I played today, and uh, <clears throat> the, uh, also uh, the men's club pancake breakfast. Every year we uh, raise money for scholarships. Uh, I'm the chairman of that committee. And um, <clears throat> the uh, a docent here in the community for uh, the historical society a number of times. Um, 
And uh, my, my uh, involvement in the, uh, in the community has uh, been, uh, I guess when, when the, uh, a couple of things that happened, uh, when there was uh, an initiative by the city to put a, to put a 40,000 square foot building in Sea Terrace Park, um, uh, from, from my experience, I thought that was not an appropriate uh, venue to take away a, a community asset for something that uh, was, was less viable for the, for the entire community, in my opinion. So I uh, organized the people to come to the city and, and to make our case and to, uh, to try to get the, uh, the, the council to see the benefit of having a park where we could have major events with uh, music and art uh, that was accessible to the whole community. So that's pretty much a, a summary of my experience and background and my interest in, in Dana Point. Thank you. Questions from council members? Mr. Miller? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Donor, you mentioned you're in corporate real estate. Mm -hmm. Do, uh, I don't know what that means. Did you develop those properties? Or did you manage them? I mean, what, what were your responsibilities? Um, when, uh, when it co the corporation would decide that they were going to grow, get smaller, uh, my job was to find the locations, to build, buy, lease, whatever it took, and then uh, to operate those facilities, and then to uh, do uh, forecasting for uh, when, a, when the high-tech company like Nortel Networks, it would grow in one area and shrink in another area. So trying to reduce our office space or to plan uh, in uh, Toronto and in, um, in, in our one of the corporate headquarters. Uh, instead of building a, a corporate headquarters downtown in, the, in a high rise, um, I looked at the assets the, the corporation had and we had a, a defunct man manufacturing plant that was a million square foot and uh, looked at why couldn't we rebuild that, use that asset, and instead of uh, $300 a square foot for a build, we spent $50 a square foot and had all of our high-tech equipment visible in that kind of facility. So it, it, was a, it involved planning um, and in communities and dealing with, uh, with the uh, uh, cities to build buildings or to, to bring jobs, uh, or when we had to downsize, getting involved with that also. So, so you dealt with planning commissions and councils planning and commissions. understood from, what the process early, is. Early in my career, when, uh, when, uh, when I was dealing with service stations, when I first started, um, when that wasn't a popular thing to come to a city and say you want to bring a gas station. Yeah. So um, when I would go to a cocktail party, I'd try to hang out with the IRS people. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> so uh, we, we would come in and try to put a, a service station in the community, and, and that was a, a, a contentious effort, but that's something that was, was part of my job. Okay. You mentioned that you... Uh, were the chair of building the uh, community center for, or the clubhouse for Nigel Shores? Yes. Did you have to interact with the Coastal Commission on that? No, um, but I interacted with uh, 2,000 people that didn't want to spend $3,000. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Have you ever had to interact with the Coastal Commission and no. understand the Coastal no, Code? Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Same question, uh, what do you hope, expect to accomplish or uh, start uh, during your term on the Planning Commission? Um, I, I, don't, I don't have a specific objective except um, I, I think there's a, a tough balance that the city has to support the businesses and also the quiet peace and enjoyment of the residents. So uh, I think that there's always a, a, a push and pull there. And so I, I look to see the Planning Commission to be a, 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 an entity that can help provide that balance. Yeah, I see that in your resume. It looks good. Thank you for applying. Mayor Pro Tem. Oh, one more. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Oh, that's that's okay. okay. We've got two more guys that are going to oh. uh, I'll make it uh, short and simple. Uh, and thank you for applying. Uh, I see that you do have uh, quite an extensive resume. And if I'm reading it correctly, you are now retired, correct? That's correct. Okay. But, but you do, uh, you are still active in the community. I see you have a list of of various things that you are still active in doing. What would you say your time commitment to the other community service is currently? Well, I, um, 
probably my biggest job is full-time grandpa, um, but, um, but I would say that the, uh, the, the electronics allow me uh, to, to do a lot of things uh, from home uh, at my own, on my own schedule. So um, I, I think uh, the 4th of July breakfast takes full-time for a couple of days, um, but uh, there's nothing on my schedule that would take precedent over, over this uh, commitment. Thank you. Uh, just two, uh, two questions. Um, as being a property owner for 41 years, what do you see as the, the best thing that's happened in Dana Point? And then maybe give an example of something that's not so great in Dana Point. So. Um, well, I'll start off with the worst thing that's happened. Um, when, um, when I was uh, living back east and had purchased property here, um, it was uh, everything that I could do to, to make an investment uh, with the, the, a family and, uh, and obligations. And I saw that the city was required to provide low-income housing. So there's a, a, a group of uh, properties near the Selva uh, parking lot that were designated as low-income. And they were to be sold on a lottery basis to uh, people that qualified. Um, and that was to be maintained as low-income housing. Um, it was a little disconcerting for me to think I had uh, worked really hard to come up and took a, lot, a big risk to buy a property close to the beach. And I found out if I made less money, um, I could have maybe gotten a property much closer at a much lower price. And then uh, lo and behold, now we have no income, no lo low income housing because uh, nobody followed through and, and uh, to make sure that that was retained. So I thought that was a terrible mistake. Um, and I, I don't know who made it, except I, I saw it, and I thought that was um, really a difficult thing that should have been corrected. I think the best thing that I've seen is uh, the, uh, the, the changes that have taken place in the, in the center of the city and, and, and the um, improvements that have been made. And uh, I, 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 walk, I can walk from my place, uh, my home, to uh, the city and enjoyed the bike race brought my grandkids up from Encinitas, uh, and they, they just had a great time. It was a wonderful event, and I walked to the, the we have a lot of things, the, 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 um, the music in the parks. I mean, I see so many things that make Dana Point such a wonderful place, and I think the city, uh, the, the city managers, the city uh, elected officials have, have done a terrific job in making Dana Point um, a, a great place to live. Thank you for your interview. Okay, is that the last one? Yes, sir. <laughs> Mark Rosen, please. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. I'm back. I was here a year ago and applied, and so I'm back here. Since uh, then, I've been elected to my homeowners association board. Uh, in the, I'm an attorney. Uh, in 2014, I represented a candidate for Auditor Controller, Eric Woolery, who was elected, and uh, he has hired me as a part-time assistant to help him with special projects in the Auditor Controller's office, and that's given me a different view of county government. Uh, I was on a city council for 10 years in Garden Grove. Part of that, I was on the Planning Commission in Garden Grove for four years. I also served on the board of the Orange County Transportation Authority for four years. So, and then when I moved to Dana Point, I was not in public service for a while, but I, I really enjoy public service and helping people and participating in local government. So I'm back here applying again. Uh, I bring a couple of things to the position. Number one, my experience. I had 14 years of dealing with planning issues, development issues. Garden Grove was very aggressive in development, and that was at the peak of the redevelopment era, which is now done with, but we were very aggressive in that. I bring independence in that I see the job as a planning commissioner to give you my best insights, my views, and lay out uh, all of the uh, issues and the evidence to help you make decisions on things that get appealed from the Planning Commission to the City Council. And third, I work hard. In the 14 years I was on the Planning Commission or the City Council, every time there was a project, I went and viewed the project. I spoke to the neighbors. Uh, I didn't rely just on 
the staff report or the paperwork. I went out and actually eyeballed everything that was coming up before us. Uh, and I walked, when I ran for election, I walked precincts, and it's interesting, you, you go knock on somebody's door and they want to talk about what they think the issue is of the day, but then they say, uh, I need to do something about the tree that's pulling up the cement outside my yard, or the kids are speeding up and down the street, and they really want to get to the nitty gritty of their everyday life. And I think that's what you have to be aware of as a planning commissioner, that you have a bunch of, of uh, matters before you, but to the people who are uh, involved in the issue, it may be the most important thing in their life, you know, if they're seeking a variance or they're trying to expand their business. And you have to constantly be aware of that in a position such as this. So that is what I offer to you. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Questions from council? Mr. Mayor, for town. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good evening, Mr. Rosen. Uh, again, thank you for applying, and obviously your resume is very impressive, and you have a uh, sort of a unique background as a city councilman and as a former planning commissioner. Uh, do you see any similarities between uh, what you experienced in Garden Grove and uh, what's happening in Dana Point currently? <clears throat> Well, what we were trying to do in Garden Grove, Garden Grove is immediately south of Anaheim, and in fact, immediately south of Disneyland. And about the time I took office um, I, as a planning commissioner, the city of uh, Anaheim had announced they were going to double the size of their convention center, and Disney had announced they were going to open the second gate, California Adventure. And the city of Garden Grove saw that as an opportunity to expand its appeal to tourism. And during the time I was on the planning commission and the council, the city, or not the city, but the city participated in adding seven or eight hotels to service the uh, added tourist community. Now, Dana Point is a tourist attraction, and the harbor in particular um, is um, very much uh, a tourist attraction. So there is that similarity. Now, Garden Grove was man-made tourism from Disney. Dana Point is natural tourism. But there is the same uh, impetus to try to maximize the opportunities from the tourist trade. There's also, um, the, the last time I was here, one of the council members mentioned Laguna Beach, comparison between Laguna Beach and Dana Point. Laguna Beach is right there on the beach, whereas the town center area is up on the bluffs from the harbor area. And so, uh, and, and the town center redevelopment has been, makes the city look a lot nicer, but there still has to be that thought behind how do you connect the town center area to the harbor area to maximize the tourist potential. But certainly both cities have had an emphasis on tourism. I happen to like hotels because among you, you attract visitors, but also the uh, the uh, transit occupancy tax is something that goes strictly to the city. You don't share it with the county. You don't share it with special districts. It's all the cities. Okay. Uh, and since you're a lawyer, I will ask you the same question okay. I asked before. Uh, what is your background in the law? <clears throat> well, I've been a practicing lawyer for almost 40 years. Um, I have a, a soul. I'm a sole practitioner with an emphasis, emphasis in civil litigation. As I mentioned, I represented the auditor controller in 2014. I do a lot of election cases, particularly in even numbered years. Uh, and I've represented a lot of candidates, a lot of uh, office holders over the years. Do you represent uh, anyone on, we'll say, land use issues or in front of other cities? Do you have any clients? Very rarely. I don't think I've done that in. Uh, quite a while. I did represent, in the city of Garden Grove, uh, the city was sued under the vote, California Voting Rights Act to go from being at large to districts. Uh, and the city quickly settled and voted to go to districts. The garden, city of Garden Grove has a directly elected mayor and a bunch of homeowners came to me, uh, this is just last November, and said, we, we don't mind the districts, but we object to losing our directly elected mayor. So I filed a, uh, 
a complaint in intervention on behalf of a local homeowners association, and we were successful in preserving the directly elected mayor. Uh, and at first I wrote letters to the uh, uh, city attorney saying you can't do away with the directly elected mayor without a vote of the people, and they ignored that, so I filed my complaint and intervention, and the judge agreed with me. So that, that's my most recent participation in city affairs. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Rosen, um, <laughs> quick question. If they preserved their direct, directly elected mayor but went to districts, didn't that throw off the number of elected officials on their on their? Well, it had, it had four council members in the mayor, so a five-member right. council. But Part you would of, go to five districts, correct? No, they went to six districts and the and directly oh, elected mayor. So it's going from five to seven in two, total. Two additional council members. Right. I got gotcha. you. Okay. My other question is, oh, that was just my curiosity going, well, that doesn't seem to work to me. I mean, I added one instead of two. But um, you mentioned that it's important to create a link between the harbor and the town center to make them successful. What do you think the Planning Commission's role would be in creating that synergy? The, the role of the Planning Commission in overall planning is to give advice to the City Council uh, as matters come before it. Uh, and you look to staff, you look to uh, other participants in the community to come up with the ideas. Uh, I don't think the Planning Commission should go marching off on its own, uh, but I think this, the Planning Commission should be responsive to the City Council. And as I said earlier, my obligation would be to give you my best views and my best advice. Uh, tell you if I, if I like something or don't like something, if I see an idea, to uh, send that on to you. So when you say you like it or don't like it, is that in, in reference to how the code views a project? You, you, you like the project because the code says it's good or you don't like it because it says it's bad or you think that you're making an interpretation between the planning, the zoning codes or the building codes and you're making that decision of whether you like that or not? Is that what you're saying? No, I, I don't think I would say you should repeal a, a, a I'm code. I'm not asking you to repeal it, but taking a look at a project and saying, you know, it meets code but I don't really feel like it meets what Dana Point's trying to do or whatever city it happens to be. Well, I th and you, I would, you would make a recommendation that I, I don't think this fits with what we're trying to accomplish here, even though it meets all the zoning and building codes? Exactly. Okay. You evaluate each project, you see where the project fits, you, you, you evaluate the project on its own merits, but you also see where it fits in within the community. And then ultimately, you vote yes or no on the Planning Commission, and on a project of that, I presume it would go to the City Council, and it's like, you try a case and you make a record on appeal. I would try to express my views on any particular project so that you, as the city council, have the benefit of my advice, my views, uh, my suggestions. Okay. And I think that's the best use of a planning commission. Okay, thank you. Mr. Rosen, what do you see as the greatest challenge for Dana Point in the next year and a half? Well, the harbor area is about to undergo some revision. And I think that, um, and that's a crucial part of the city. And I think uh, it's important to monitor that and to have for the city to have an input into that. I know the harbor area is predominantly owned by the county, but I th it's a vital part of the city and I think that that needs to be uh, monitored in great detail. Any further questions from council members? Thank you, Mr. Rosen. Thank you. Thank you for your interview. Up next is Barbara McKnight. Hi. I should tell you I go by the name, my middle name, Joni. Uh, I was a teacher at Laguna Beach High School for um, about 30 years between the middle school and the high school. Um, <clears throat> I taught mainly biology, chemistry, physics, integrated science that I developed. I did um, a district-wide program that lined up uh, district codes with the city, or I'm sorry, the state codes for education there. I was on the union there. So I had a lot of leadership roles there. Um, and when I first got here, 
I was lucky enough to get into one of those condos over at Niguel Beach Terrios, but I actually qualified because people like teachers actually did qualify. Um, we used to call it the Ritz Projects, affordable housing here in Dana Point. Um, but I will agree, it was misused. It was misused and it wasn't handled badly. The California Commission, Coastal Commission came up with that whole program. And right from the start, there was a carrot at the end of a stick. After 30 days, if you can't sell it, you can just sell it to someone outside the program. So people, they had a carrot to do that. After 20 years, the restrictions were lifted. They had a carrot to wait. So people like me who didn't abuse it and, and benefited from aff affordable housing here, it was a good idea. But I will agree. There's even a problem now with short-term rentals in there. So, And I'm on the HOA board there as well. I was voted in about two years ago. I decided to take, take retirement. People said, well, what are you going to do when you retire? And I said, anything I want. Um, and I really loved it, but I wanted to turn my attention to some other issues. And I think local politics have always fascinated me. I was part of, when the city was new, I was part of a group called Save the Headlands. And it was a conglomeration of environmental groups, which I was involved with. The Endangered Habitat League was a conglomerate of groups that headed by a guy named Dan Silver trying to mitigate between environmental groups that were just rabid about nothing's going in over there to, um, it, you know, it's, it's got to be preserved to, we're going to put a thousand casitas up there and we'll call them casitas and we'll put what you can believe the things that were going to go in there. I was part of the group that helped change the specific plan and the general plan, we put it to a vote uh, twice because the first time it was rejected, we didn't have the general plan with us, which is this thick and not available. So we went out and did it again. I've been on both sides of a controversy like this. As an HOA board member right now, I feel like we've had all these meetings about this particular issue that you're upset about now. Where were you when we had all these meetings and we came up with these plans? And then the flip side is a lot of people feel like, oh, we're, we're losing our local control. We're losing control of our town. And Dana Point, to me, I mentioned in my resume, how my husband's in the music business. And I've traveled all over the world with, world with him. He's coming back from South Africa with the Mariah tour. And we last spent the world tour with Roger Waters, Pink Floyd, um, everybody. You name somebody, Madonna, been on those tours. I've stayed in five-star restaurants. I've stayed, or hotels, seen the world with him. And whenever people ask me, what's the best place you've ever been? It's here. I really feel lucky to have landed here. I can't wait to get home. Because this is a great little town. It's not snooty like New Newport. It's Dana Point. It's got its own personality. That Save the Headlands group was not just environmental groups. It was a, con a conglomeration of groups that were upset with the original general plan. One of the groups didn't want the Lantern District to be turned into a redevelopment zone. So they joined in. It was a conglomeration. Capo Beach area joined in. They didn't want things to get out of their control because Dana Point was a new city because prior to that it was run by the county and you get five supervisors and five developers telling you what's going to go on. So it became a new city and it went through all the growing up process a new city goes through. I watched both sides, you, you know, environmentalists saying you can't build anything there and just looking at them going, that's private property, he's going to put something in there. To, we can do whatever we want, it's our land. You can say the same thing about STRs. Well, what if I want to put a 7-Eleven next to you? You have a problem with that? So there's, there's a compromise in between. What I think finally went in up there is a beautiful compromise because there's a lot of endangered habitat that was preserved and there's a lot of building that went in that's really nicely done, really nicely done. Um, but I've been to the Coastal Commission meetings. I used to come to the City Council meetings, environmental group meetings to where I got burned out on it. Um, but focusing back on, let's see, uh, as a matter of fact, I remember that redevelopment um, issue. A lot of the people in the Lantern District were, I, they were scared that their place, their area was going to be con considered a redevelopment zone. The prices would go down. Developers would swoop in, buy them out at those prices, and they were very upset about that. They were really upset. LA Times sent some reporters down here to try to find the blight in Dana Point. And the big joke was they couldn't find any. They couldn't find any blight. It was just such a nice place. Um, so after all those years um, on the union board and in teaching, 
Um, um, I, I wanted to mention that I was with Save the Headlands because I kind of got out, I got kind of burnt out of the, the whole, I was at meetings all the time. But I, I do like that citizens stood up and said, this is what we want. Because there was no place for, a, a, you know, where were the workers live. There was, there, I understand why you had to have an iron environmental impact report, why you had to have regulations that looked at everything, like how many roads you got coming in, how, just basics, you know, if you, you have to account for the effect this is gonna have on the town. I'm getting out of my order here, but that's why I put this so I would kind of hit everything. But I've just been asking people around lately, what do you think of H&I? Because that seems like the big controversy right now. When I was in, involved in this, it was development, local control, or developers. And everyone I've asked pretty much doesn't know the difference. No, I'm not, and I'm not talking to stupid people, even some of the business owners. I don't know, I'm not even sure what the difference is. But I just, business owners, here's what I'm hearing, I just wanted to get it done. Get it done, get it finished. Uh, it's a lot of homeowners that seem to be all riled up about what's going on. And I'm even, I'm looking and I'm trying to find the information on it. So just FYI, a lot of people would like to know more about what the controversy is. And I don't think that's really getting out there. Um, trying to think. Da, 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 da. I talked about pretty much this, this community, I think, has been the best kept secret in Orange County for a long time. But it's not anymore. And living over there near Strands, I've seen it go from the places where the surfers cut holes in the barbed wire and practically killed themselves to getting down to the beach to what we've got in there now. Um, and like I said, being on an HOA board is eye-opening. It's eye-opening. One of the best administrators I ever worked for, and I've worked with some amazing administrators and worked for some terrible ones too. Luckily, the amazing ones came first. And one of the principals I worked for that gave me his advice in how to make decisions when I became department chair and I became <laughs> science mentor. He said, whatever decision you make, someone's not gonna like it. Either the students won't, the parents won't, the teachers won't, the administrators won't. Somebody's not gonna like it. So let your focus be, he said, this is what I do. I let my focus be, what's the best thing for the kids? That's like the light at the end of the tunnel. And I never forgot that. And it helped me to steer my pathway through teaching in the education system, which can be <laughs> quite a maze. Um, even on the HOA board, I don't have a short-term rental. I'm there, that's my home. I don't necessarily object if it's done legally to people having that, but I see the problems that are happening with other cities in the area that said, sure, go ahead, and then now they're running into all kinds of problems. So they're pulling back. Um, <coughs> The nice thing for me is I don't have a business interest in that. I'm not, I don't have a secret political agenda. I don't have an interest I'm trying to protect except my home. Um, so when I make decisions on that board, my decisions are what's the best thing for the people in this community as a whole. Not you, just you, just you, just you, but as a whole. What's the best <laughs> thing for everybody? And that's a really good guiding light. That's a really good lighting light. Um, I also have issues with transparency. I think if you're very transparent and you give people a chance to come to these meetings, hear what everyone wants to do, hear who wants to do this, who wants to do that, what the <laughs> obstacles are in the way. If people have had a chance to do that and they chose not to, then that's your problem. Okay, you should have spoke up sooner. At the same time, I understand feeling, people feeling like, whoa, this is getting out of our control. It's just the city council and these developers, and, and then that's it, and we have no say. Or whatever this plan was, they're not sticking with it, they're deviating from it. That's a fine line to walk. It's a very fine line to walk. And to me, the bottom line is, what's the best thing for this community? And I include the businesses in that. But it was enlightening <laughs> to talk to them and hear them go, I don't know much about this. So that was kind of my little walk around response to them. Um, anything you want to ask me? Because I could go on and on. I'm an ex teacher. Yeah. Let's move on to any questions by council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as I asked before, do you have any objectives or plans you'd like to see pressed forward through the Planning Commission? You know, as you were, other people were answering. 
I wanted to see this controversy to see if there was a good way to settle that. Because, you know, I do sympathize with the business owners that you know, all these empty buildings and the, the, the streets, a lot of people don't know which way to go now. Um, people who are new to it are like, what, what's your problem? Um, I, I would like to see something that, you're not gonna make everybody happy. You're just not going to. But if it's good for not only, I know a lot of people will say, okay, we want to bring tourism to this city. We want that to be, um, that's a good stream of income. But it has to be done legally. Um, it has to be done with transparency and people have to have a feeling that it's, they've had input on this. Um, so if that's, if that's your goal, that's fine. I find that sitting on a board, if there are people who have a business interest in something that, that, that they want that certain thing, um, they're not free. Their, their judgment is clouded. Um, so what I would like to see is Dana Point retain its identity, but able to move forward, able to move forward and get, the, a lot of those empty lots are not pretty. You know, they're not, it's, there's a lot of, I, when I first heard about the town center plan, I thought of Third Street Promenade or something really like you wanna get out of your car and go walk there. Um, and, the, and driving through Denton Point was like the freeway, it was. It still kinda is. Um, and I was in Laguna a long time and I saw when it, people slow down and they see all the businesses. So I can understand wanting to have that here um, but it's got to be done carefully and with a lot of thought, like you can't turn into Ralph's anymore and you can't, you know, there just has to be thought into this before people start going, what do they do? So my goals, what's the best thing for the community? All of them, not just the individuals screaming and yelling, but the businesses, the homeowners. I think the two big issues there are the, the initiatives and short-term rentals, that seems to be two big ones, not just for Dana Point, but for a lot of cities around here. San Clemente's doing it, Laguna's banning them. So, you know, but I'm kind of neutral. I, I, I don't have, I don't have an interest in this except that do the right thing. So, any other questions? Any other questions by council members? Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'll just continue along the theme I've been asking. You, you're not a lawyer, correct? No. But I, I My dad is a lawyer. I do I'm, see I'm on your resume it says you're still a member of the Southern Poverty Law Center. What what does that mean? You're Southern Poverty Law Center fights hate groups. Um, Ku Klux Klan. They started out in the South Ku Klux Klan. Now it's all hate groups, terrorist groups. But they, uh, I got an anti-bullying pro program going, especially for LBGT kids. Their suicide rate was like astronomically high across the nation. So I decided it was time to stop being just tolerant of of you know, kids who are gay and be proactive to, there's nothing wrong with you. Um, and the bullying just had to stop. And I was trying this way before it was, I was way out of the curve on that one. There was a lot of people that are not ready to hear what I had to say, but um, it's now become a, real, a nationwide issue because bullying the way it was when we were kids, you know, a couple of kids in the schoolyard, now, it's, it goes viral and it affects, you know, thousands of people know what stupid thing you did um, or can say anything they want about you. So the Southern Poverty Law Center got behind a lot of LGBT, but not just LGBT kids, anti-bullying, and so did the ACLU. I was involved with the ACLU. Um, they're the ones who set up Seth's Law. All the schools have to participate in that now where you have to um, inform kids where to go, what to do if you feel like you're bullied, you're being bullied. And especially if they're getting suicidal. So that's okay. what they do. They're really an amazing group. They're, for, they're tracking terrorists now too. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any further questions? Mr. Miller. Okay, thanks. Uh, oh, hold on, hold oh, on. Sorry. Yeah. Ms. Knight, um, you mentioned you think the two big things going on in the city right now are the initiatives mm -hmm. and short-term rentals. What do you think the role of the planning commissioners are in initiatives first and then short term rentals? How, how would the planning commission? I think as far as the city goes with the two measures, um, I don't know how quickly this can be done before the election, mm -hmm. but you need to make, somehow th there's a communication blockade 
for what are these measures. There's a few people I read editorials from them, and uh, Neighborhood Strand is sort of like a Facebook for neighbor Strand's area. I get that, and I see all kinds of debates going on back and forth. Um, somehow, those I would like to see those groups talking in the same language or as close as you can get. Um, so how do you think the Planning Commission would do that? You don't or you do? How, no, I'm asking you. Oh, well, how, how do you think the Planning Commission, or do you think that's the Planning Commission's role, is, I guess is a better question. Is that the Planning Commission's role? I think role it's to the role to that? listen to everybody, be, like I said, be extremely transparent mm -hmm. in the entire process, answer any questions honestly, uh, make sure what you're done, doing is being legally done, um, and then make your recommendations to the city council. But be the place where people can go and be heard prior to getting to here. We're channeling it to you. The best example I can give you is on the board, as on, on an HOA board, we have a lot of um, committees. That committee, one committee is doing something that takes so much effort, they need to be a committee. They come to us and make their recommendations. I think the Planning Commission should do the same. This is what we have found, listening to people, talking to people, doing some research, bring it to you, and then at least you, you know, you've heard. You've heard from everybody. Okay, thank you. Okay. I have no questions. Thank you for your interview, Ms. McKnight. Next is Matthew Miller. Good evening. Uh, my name is Matthew Miller. I'm an architectural professional with uh, 12 years of experience, and I've lived in Dana Point for five years now. Um, I'm very involved uh, with NAOP, formerly the National Association of Industrial and Office Properties. I joined the Dana Point Yacht Club last year, and I'm an active member there, and I was formerly uh, an Army Reservist uh, back in Oregon before moving to California. Um, and I was on the inaugural Arts and Culture Commission here in town from 2011 to 2013. Uh, so I'm excited about this opportunity to uh, serve my community once more. Um, I'm, I'd imagine that a lot of people would seek a position like this so that they could control what happens in our city and you know, accept or reject uh, development in the town center in particular. Um, my main aim and focus would be to instead be a resource and to help collaborate with the different um, uh, property owners and invested interests uh, to work out compromises and so that everybody could essentially kind of get what they want. Um, I want to be a guide. Um, that's kind of what I do every day as, as a, uh, in the architecture world. I uh, work with various local jurisdictions to help get projects entitled and through plan check and permits. Um, so I have to build relationships and work within the code and the system on a regular basis. Um, I have to form compromises with, those, with clients and the city so that everybody can kind of get what they want. Um, and in order to do that, I have to know the, uh, I have to understand the mechanics of real estate development. I, I have to understand that a project not only needs to pencil, but it needs to park. Um, but at the same time, as a resident, for instance, if I was a uh, planning commissioner, I'd want to see that our city could somehow maintain its small town charm. So I think that there needs to be a kind of a balance. Um, and uh, just in closing, um, the previous person spoke about the initiatives that are, are before us. Um, my aim would be to uh, work with the opponents of, of for instance, of uh, uh, people that are in favor of, of Measure H. Uh, my goal would be to work with those people and show them what uh, successful development could look like if we all work together. Thank you. Questions from council members? Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, thank you for your service to the country, and also I see that you serve the community on the Arts and Culture Commission, so clearly you are service-minded, but I, I do want to ask you about the Arts and Culture Commission. Uh, why, why did you leave the Arts and Culture Commission? My term expired. Um, I was, uh, we were brand new, so I was one of the people that had the, the two-year two, two slot, and then I chose to not seek reappointment. Um, uh, for various reasons, mostly just because I had a, uh, let's see, at the time I think I had a two-year-old. So that was kind of the main reason. So, so the time commitment for the Arts and Culture Mission? Well, uh, 
to be honest, one of my concerns was uh, kind of the direction of, that the, the commission took at the time. Um, I, I wanted the commission to, to do more, um, and I wasn't, um, and I wanted to continue to serve, but I thought I could serve better, for instance, on the planning commission. I wanted to actually have more meetings, not less. I thought that the Arts and Culture Commission could do more. Um, so I chose to take a step back and wait for another opportunity to serve my community in a better way. Okay, thank you. What do you see as the biggest challenge facing Dana Point in the next year and a half to two years? Um, I think the the upcoming elections are gonna ha are gonna be interesting to see what happens and and the initiatives. Um, I think like previous previous people have mentioned, um, tying in our our city with the harbor. Um, but I think the, the biggest issue moving forward is, is how do we finish the town center and how do we finish it right and what kind of trends can we set and standards can we set um, so that it's finished and done right, so that it's worth the investment that's been made. How can we make it successful? That would be, um, I think, the biggest kind of upcoming challenge. Thank you. Any further questions from council members? Mr. Miller. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Miller, you mentioned that in your dealings with other cities and, and clients, um, you form compromises. Do, do you think that's the PC or the uh, Planning Commission's job is to, to create compromise or to enforce the zoning and building codes? I believe that there is the code is black and white, but then there's to some extent the letter of the law. So I, I believe that there's always, um, you know, case in point, uh, a recent um, city that I was working with uh, wanted us to put, uh, we were just doing an exterior um, remodel of a building and they wanted us to spend um, thousands or tens of thousands of dollars putting in sidewalks, even though there was no sidewalks um, in the area because they wanted us to connect to future sidewalks, even though there was none there. Um, I'm kind of a, just a big fan of logic, I guess, so I would look to see how can the city get what, it's, what it wants but also meet the property owner halfway. Um, I think that's the best way to work. I think also kind of taking, like I said, uh, collaborating or, or compromising. Somebody like me that's a, that is in the architecture world, somebody comes before the, the body and says, hey, we need a variance. We want to add a fourth story or we need an extra... Um, you know, variance on the setback. I, with my experience, I can look at look at the um, look at their plans, look at their drawings, and say, "No, you don't. Why don't you do it like this? Why don't you try it like this?" I want to help offer solutions um, so that they can still pencil and park their project, but that the city can have a building that fits within uh, the municipal code. Thank you. Any further questions from council members? No. Thank you for your time, Mr. Thank Mellon. you. Luke Bowen, did I pronounce that correctly? Yes, you did. Thank you. I was going to restate it, just to state it for the record, but you got it perfect. Thank you, uh, Mayor Tomlinson, members of the council, the city staff, uh, for having me here tonight. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you all. Um, I feel like I'm qualified to be on the planning commission because representing public entities is part of my day-to-day -day practice at work. Uh, I'm currently an attorney with a law firm that represents over 500 public entities throughout the state, and I work particularly on business, uh, land use, and governance issues. Uh, for my business and real estate work, it's primarily drafting agreements for real estate purchase, construction agreements, uh, facilities use, and architectural agreements. Uh, in addition to that, we're also looking at municipal ordinances to determine whether uh, there could be a zoning change to determine whether a project is, you know, uh, going to uh, comply with the zoning ordinance and s be able to be permitted. Uh, in addition to that, the governance work is largely looking at um, political reform act compliance, conflict of interest laws, and. Um, the Brown Act, which you all are very familiar with as public officials. Um, so that's my day-to-day -day practice. And before that, I 
previously worked at the Newport Beach City Attorney's Office working on similar municipal governance issues and uh, dealing with California Coastal Commission uh, permitting and things of that nature. Um, and beyond this uh, legal experience, uh, planning is a personal passion of mine. Uh, while I was getting my law degree, I was taking classes in the Masters in Urban and Regional Planning at UC Irvine. And for my work there, I was given a scholarship to go up to uh, the land use and uh, planning conference that the city staff go to. I think the city manager was there and probably uh, several of the, uh, the planning staff. Um, beyond all of that, uh, you know, I want to be on the planning commission because uh, I've been a part of this community for 30 years and I am lucky to be raising my family here now. Uh, I look forward to continue to do that, and I think the Planning Commission plays a helpful role in maintaining and uh, improving the quality of life for everyone who lives in, uh, does business in, or visits Dana Point. Questions from council members? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, same question. Is there anything you'd like to try to accomplish or see that the Planning Commission gets done in regards to uh, your goals? Um, one thing that I think is important and pretty straightforward and going to be largely a reiteration of everyone who's come before me is just building on the momentum of what we've already set in, set in motion with the town center, some of the planning that's been started down in Capo Beach, um, you know, projects like the trolley system getting going, uh, and just Working to, going back to the town center in particular, you know, I've seen these lots sit vacant for years and there's been slow progress and now we're seeing a bit more. But, um, you know, there's also been the community backlash and uh, so seeing if there's a way we can work with the property owners, uh, the developers, and the community to intelligently get these properties developed in a way that's going to uh, make everyone happy because there's a lot of potential there. Other questions? Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, thank you for coming in and reapplying. And I think you've answered my question already about your background in the law and what your qualifications are. Uh, so I'll ask you this. Are you an associate at your firm now? Uh, yes. How many hours are you required to bill? Uh, year, day, or month? Yearly. 1800 1800 okay have you uh, have you talked to your boss about your intention to apply yeah to and and they encouraged me to do so they encourage you to be on yeah, the plan because my work is largely working with public entities like this it's additional experience that I think will be helpful um, and, and my firm believes in work-life balance it's rare among law firms but it's a great firm that's why I'm, why I'm there okay uh, you're also on the traffic improvement subcommittee. That's right. Is that uh, what do you plan to do with that? Do you plan to stay on that, or I think based selected? on the city's incompatible offices uh, rule, I, I'd be vacating that immediately if appointed. Okay. Thank you. Question for you on your: Can you elaborate on your coastal commission experience? Yeah. Um, so. There's one additional aspect that I didn't mention because, uh, well, uh, I worked as a pro bono volunteer actually on the Strands case. Uh, so that's my most significant Coastal Commission experience, um, working on some of the litigation there uh, back in 2009. Um, but in addition to that, uh, you know, outside of Dana Point uh, and our Coastal Commission issues, um, up in Newport Beach, we worked on, you know, issues related to uh, moving sand, which is a surprisingly complex process, <laughs> as, as you all may know, <laughs> and dredging and things like that. <laughs> Mr. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Bowen, again, thank you for reapplying. I know this is a tough process to go through, especially twice. Um, and I don't think I asked you this last time, and that's why I'm going to ask it again. How, how do you feel about the projects that are going on in town center right now? How do you, how do you think that process went through their approval? And uh, 
ultimately up until they're they're breaking ground um yeah that's that's a good question i mean i i have been following uh, pretty much all of the projects uh, as best as i can um i can see actually the Bev the bevmo um going up it's been fun to show my little boy i think it's going to be the prettiest bevmo that there's <laughs> that's going to exist um but uh you know the projects that are slated to be built i mean it's hard to say, right? I, I don't want to... Let me rephrase that. How do you feel... We, we have one large project that's kicking off yeah, right now. the Majestic. The Majestic. Did you, did you follow that process and, and through its approval, through, its, through planning commission, up until the, the, uh, the appeal you, to the council? Did, the did you follow through that with that? How do you think the planning commission handled that? Uh, okay, the, the Majestic's a, a good one. I mean, that's the biggest one. And I remember when the story polls were up there, and I, I feel like maybe it got lost in the shuffle somewhere. I feel like it was downsized from initially wanting to take over the, um, the post office. Maybe that was a separate issue in terms of getting rid of the post office. Um, in terms of how it was dealt with, with the variances and things of that nature and going through the appeals process, I mean, I think that I am okay with the Majestic <laughs> Project. Uh, I feel like it, it's okay. Uh, I, I know the Majestic Project is largely the reason that we have the Measure H uh, that's going to be coming through, and that disappoints me because I feel like Measure H, while the people have very good intentions, and I don't want to show too much bias toward any further action. I mean, I'm going to look at each thing that comes through as it comes, but you know, the the parking issues um, and, and things things like that, that people are anticipating, uh, I'm, I'm not seeing it the, the same way as, as some of those people. As, as I talked with Betty on, on the bike race day, as best as I could holding my two-year-old, um, I, I, th I think that the projects that have come through and been approved have, have gone through okay. Um, you know, I, I'm not gonna, each commission, each, uh, each, the the planning commission and the city council, you know, there there hasn't been unanimity on these votes, so I can't say I I would have vote would have voted for or disapproved each one. Um, I guess I, I'm not asking that. Uh, okay. I, I guess what I'm I'm sorry I kind of let you hang out there. Sorry, I have done yeah. That, but, uh, you saw the, how the planning process went and how the commissioners reacted to it. And I guess what I'm getting to is there was a lot of questions about how that building looked mm -mm. and did that have any relevance with our code? And mm. I, I guess I'm asking, how do you feel about that? Do you think that's the planning commission's role to get into, I want to move windows, I want to, uh, uh, you know, things like that? Or, sure. or do you think that's something that the code doesn't dictate where the window is? So why should, who's it? You know, my question is, gotcha. do you think that's planning commission's role? Um, generally speaking, no. I, I don't think that's um, what they're there to do. Um, but uh, I, I don't think planning commissioners should shy away from giving input, um, as I believe it was Mr. Miller, the architect, who said he would be there as a guide. I, I mean, I, I think that can be a valuable service. And um, aesthetic evaluations, I think, are important and, you know, my main uh, qualm with the Majestic thus far would be aesthetics, actually. Um, so I, although I, I don't think that is the vital role of the Planning Commission and it, that is not what they are there to do, I think it would be important to comment um, for the sake of the community, for the sake of the developers, for the sake of planning staff to communicate um, any concerns or recommendations you might have beyond your yes or no on the project so that they can take it back to the drawing board if it's going that way, build the record, and so forth. Okay, thank you. One additional question. You, you said in your statement that uh, in your spare time you like to read a lot about development planning and design. <laughs> um, and you, you apologize, I'm sorry if this outs me as not being cool, but uh, <laughs> how, much, how, much should, how many books do you read about that? What, what, tell, uh, me, tell me your focus on that. Curr currently, right now, um, I, I'm reading. 
Uh, does anybody know Andre Duany, Congress for the New Urbanism? Uh, so I, I'm reading his manifesto right now. I was debating getting Donald Shoup's uh, book. He's a UCLA professor. Um, it's called The High Cost of Free Parking. Um, it, it, <laughs> it's a surprisingly popular 700-page book on parking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have not yet dove into that one. Um, my, my, my main claim to fame in, in terms of reading is I did get through The Great American Doorstop, which is David Foster Wallace's Infinite Jest. Any, anything? Okay. Um, but no, I, I, I mean, I, I read as much as I can um, with an 1,800-hour uh, billable requirement and a young son. Um, and, and so we, we try and get him to bed as early as possible. Don't read him the high cost of free parking. <laughs> <laughs> Any further questions from council members? Thank you very much for your interview. Thank you. Okay, um, I guess I'm looking for su suggestions on how to proceed with the ballot here. Do we want to vote for one selection, two selections? We have one open seat. Um, Madam Ma City Clerk, Ma could Madam you Clerk? Uh, assist the council with the voting process that we've used in the past? That'd Correct. Be great. I, Thank you. I've provided uh, voting slips, so it's up to you if you want to put your top one first or top two or top three, and then I'll take your responses once, or if you can read them off to me, and I've got a sheet all ready to go for voting purposes. See if we've got a... Any consent? What uh, do you guys want to do? One, two, or three? Selection? Three. three? Yeah, three. Okay, let's do three. Is that con everybody in concurrence with that? Thank you. Please select your three top selections. Like everybody's ready, we'll start with uh, Mr. Oliveira. First, donor. Second, Bowen. Third, Rosen. Oh, before uh, I proceed, I should probably give you back your sheet. Madam Clerk, do you need? Oh, you have an extra one? Okay, thank you. Councilmember Miller. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, donor. Second, Bowen. Third, Rosen. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, Roy Donor. Second, Mark Rosen. Third, Luke Bowen. Madam Clerk, my selections are Bowen, Donor, Slapen. Okay, um, Mr. Mayor, we have three number one choices for uh, applicant Roy Donor. Uh, the second choice would be Luke Bowen with two, two choices for Mr. Bowen. And the third would be Mr. Rosen with two choices in the third slot. Well, it sounds like we have a consensus for the top vote getter. Is that, is that everybody's reading? I would, what I would recommend that based upon the vote taken, that there be a motion to appoint Roy Donor to the Planning Commission. And what would that term be? Is that a four-year term? I think it's three. Three? The remainder of the yeah. four-year Yes, I believe it is the remainder of a four-year term. I'd like the city yes. clerk to concur it with is. that. Don't think I think his term it. was till the s vacancies till the 19th. 
until 20 2019 19 so it would be the continuation of the Continue. three that three more years that's correct March 2019 okay mr. mayor I'll hear a motion yes go ahead uh, I'll move that we appoint uh, mr. donor to the vacant seat as the top vote getter for this City Council for uh, open for the remainder of the term which expires in 2019 March 2019 second okay it's been regularly moved in second is there any further discussion if not please cast your vote the motion passes four to zero congratulations mr. donor and thank you for all the applicants who submitted applications today and spent time interviewing. We, we really sincerely appreciate your offer to serve our community. Thank you very much. Next item on this evening's agenda is public comments. There will be a three minute time limit per person and an overall time limit of 15 minutes for this public comments portion of the agenda. At the mayor's discretion, the balance of public comments will be heard after the new business portion of the agenda. All comments are to be directed to the City Council and shall not consist of any personal attacks. Members of the public are expected to maintain a professional, courteous decorum during their comments. State law prohibits the City Council from taking action on a specific, uh, sorry, specific item unless it appears on the posted agenda. The City Clerk will distribute any handouts you may have. Please state your name and city of residence for the record. This evening we have three speakers. First will be Kirk Richlew. Uh, yes, thank you. My name is Kirk Richlew, and uh, the reason I'm here today is my wife and Saritha and I uh, bought about a year and a half ago to this community. We've always loved it, moved from Newport Beach. But our main concern is the short-term rentals that we're very concerned about. We've watched this develop over the, over the year and a half and it has raised a lot of concerns among all, you know, a lot of my neighbors, I shouldn't say all, I can't speak for everyone. Uh, and what is happening with our homeowners association is they have outvoted uh, to have uh, short-term rentals in our community, but they can't meet quorum, not enough people are participating. So things are just going, you know, the way they're going towards more short-term rentals. And what it is doing to our community, it's kind of, you know, giving us that motel type feeling. We're seeing people come by that we've never seen before, you know, and when you live in a community, you get to know your neighbors, whether you like them or become friends or not like them, but you know each other. So you know who belongs and to who does not belong, and if there's something a little bit different, then you know kind of to maybe put, keep an eye on that and watch what's going on. Well, with people coming in all the time, you know, you don't know who anyone is, and that's one thing, but another thing also is, we constantly have people knocking on our door, asking directions to where certain things are, things like that, and they'll bring their animals, and I have two dogs and a parrot. So we are very good animal people and know how to take responsibility. They'll leave their messes all over the place, and then who picks it up? We don't have a crew that comes around cleaning up after these people like a hotel does. So I will pick things up because this is my community and my wife's community and a lot of other people's community. And we see more and more of this going on and more and more short-term rentals coming into the community and it's just degrading the home atmosphere that we moved here for. And so rather than my wife and I just sitting around having a cup of hot cocoa and complaining, I wanted to come here tonight, my wife and I, and at least give our opinion on what's going on and how we feel and how a lot of other people feel about it as well. So that's basically all I have to say at this point. Uh, I would love if anyone here had a question for me, you know, I would love that. Mayor Tomlinson, if I could, I'd like to ask Mr. and Mrs. Richelieu to please call City Hall and ask for me, Doug Shot Cabus. I'd love to engage you in a dialogue to one, find out which HOA you're at, and and I'd like to sit down with staff and talk to you about the issues you're finding. You're, you're, I'd love to, you're, yeah. You're now, just to make my position straight, I'm not an official spokesperson, no, or I am I on the HOA, but uh, um, I would love to do that, yeah. sir. I'd love to chat with you about Thank it. Thank you. Do you have a card I might have from uh, you? City yes, Clerk can give you my contact information thank you, sir, very okay. much. Appreciate that. thank you for your comments this evening next will be Tom Gates uh, I gotta put on my glasses to read what I want must be getting old well thank you for the time what I'm going to talk about tonight has relevance for every section of 
Dana Point from Monarch Beach to Monarch Bay to the Dana Hills area of town, Lantern District, Capo Beach, Doheny Village, Blue Lantern. We have a real problem in this town with good government. And uh, we've had some missteps here in the past with past councils, some with this council, one with this council. Uh, some of the problems we've had in the past have been pretty expensive. No oversight on the bed tax that is collected for that. Hotels and a million dollars went wasted on illumination. This is money that if we had that million dollars, think how many scholarships you could give to residents, children that graduated from Dana Hills High School and could go to college. That's a lot of money. Next was the Headlands area where we've got um, uh, almost a million dollars there, which 600,000 has been recouped by the city, but there's still 300,000 outstanding. And then there's Majestic. And Majestic, we gave away hundreds of thousands of dollars to an out-of-town developer. And what was the benefit for that? We're just going to have congestion on the streets. We don't, have a, we don't have a parking plan. Finally, Prop H and Prop I. 4,200 residents of this town got together and signed a petition to put H on the ballot. And what happened? Out-of-town interests pressured the council, this council, to put I on the ballot. So let's see, we've got four council members and over 4,000 residents that put an H on the ballot. That's a tenth of 1%. That's really bad government, in my opinion. And we've got one council member who voted against it at the time, so he could have some political cover if he's going to run again in the next election, but then wrote a strongly worded op-ed piece in favor of I. So I say there's four people that voted for it. Um, from the town staff to the council, the average Joe, the resident, is ignored or derided for speaking up. Sometimes mistakes get, make, get made and you can correct them and you, you overlook them. But H and I, the I being rather an arrogant and uh, arrogant course of action by this council, really detaches you from the residents of this town. I think the four of you should resign and do it quickly do it by the end of this week so that we can have good government back in this town, government by the people. So make Dana Point government great again. Make Dana Point great again. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Final speaker this evening is Cindy Fleming. Good evening, Councilman. My name is Cindy Fleming, and my husband and I are 30-year residents of Dana Point. After I pleaded again last meeting for a proper parking plan that would ensure successful businesses and respect for residential neighborhoods, you retorted that you have a parking plan and that Cindy Nelson's background in Santa Ana, you knew what you were doing. I respect Cindy. I want to make it very clear I am not pointing a finger at any staff individual. After all, the buck stops with this council. Santa Ana made a terrific comeback in its downtown area. The Santa Ana downtown redevelopment increased the residential de density, includes live-work units as well as apartments and a few condos. They have retail uses on ground floor and a burgeoning restaurant scene. They also have a huge amount of professional office uses and government or related offices in the area. And they have public parking garages or lots in nearly every other block. I want you to note that although the mix of professional and office uses during business weekdays with retail and restaurants busy at nights and weekends is ideal for shared parking, but they re recognized that alone it was not sufficient and provided parking, public parking facilities as well. The difference in Dana Point is stark. The Nelson Nygaard parking study identified a number of areas where the parking already exceeds 100% full at regular times and overflows into adjacent res residential areas, but you've refused to address it. You say that you'll chase away the commercial parking by putting in paid parking in the residential zones. Now we know that par paid parking does not chase commu commercial uses away. Right here in Dana Point, 
we have a new restaurant that has done its best to expand its parking capacity beyond the 10 per thousand ratio that it has on site by implementing a valet service and people have lined up on Pacific Coast Highway to pay to park there. It's still not enough, so they also use an adjacent vacant lot, good for them. That restaurant is doing everything it can to increase avail available parking, but adjacent restaurant residents excuse me, will still tell you that patrons who want to park their own cars or who come by on a night when the valet is full park on residential streets. And when we have events such as the recent car show and bike races, where do visitors interested in these events park? Even with the bike race having an unusually light turnout this year, we had people in our very full neighborhood who asked where there were parking lots. I continue to advocate for a real parking plan that addresses existing problems in a manner that does not harm the quality of life of long-term residents and ensures that new development and existing businesses alike can succeed. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Moving on to the next agenda item, it's unfinished business. Mr. Shockeves, is there a staff report? Uh, yes, there is, Mayor Thomas. And the next item is, again, another parking agreement that's being brought forward as a result of Cindy Nelson's hard work and diligent effort uh, I believe this one raises our total parking of private converted to public to 74, and we anticipate another agreement coming forward at the next council meeting. So again, we're continuing to move forward. And I, and I think what's important to point out is that um, you know, we're going through the town center plan. We talked about surface parking as a parking alternative to provide parking until we can find the correct de development uh, formatting or the development footprint rather in town center to better address those parking needs. What's interesting is I hear talk of a parking structure only there's no money to pay for a parking structure right now. And the thought is is that we're uh, through the town center planning process which was a very public process of over 30 meetings. Uh, the public had a lot of time and, and we're talking about we would put off the implementation until the town center was being built. And that's what we're doing right now. Um, we're securing private, we're converting private into public parking. Uh, but again, this is consistent with the discussion going on. Um, the city doesn't have the funding to pay for a parking structure. And oftentimes, as we see, I can tell you my last experience in Whittier and Santa Ana, a number of cities who did use redevelopment funding, which the city has never had, to build these parking structures. And no sooner does it get built, they're trying to figure out how do we tear it down to save face because it's being underutilized. So again, I think what we're doing is very prudent using identifying and acquiring surface lots on a lease until such time as we can find a more permanent fix, but also to allow the business and commercial activity to build to a point that they can sustain a parking district. If we were to try and levy a parking district right now, it would eliminate any and all development in that town center. So again, what we have to do is allow the development to come and, and embrace what Nelson Nygaard has done, but also we've <coughs> talked about all along of finding surface parking lots to, on a leased basis until such time as we can get around a more permanent parking solution, but also one that can be affordable <coughs> to the business and commercial community, as well as the city of Dana Point. So with that, I wanna thank Ursula and Cindy for bringing this agreement forward. And it, like I said, I look forward to another agreement coming forward uh, at the next council meeting. So with that, Ursula and I would be happy to respond to any questions this council might have. Questions from council members? Mr. Oliveira. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chakevis, how are we at our, or the residents or the users know which parking spot is a public, free public parking spot? Oh, good question. Mr. Fowler and his staff have ordered uh, parking signs. Uh, we've ordered a surplus of them in anticipation of getting more uh, parking spaces in the near future. And I believe Mr. Fowler and Mr. Senecore have assured me that those parking signs would be installed as soon as they arrive, which I believe is Wednesday or Thursday. Correct, Mr. Fowler? Pardon me. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Miller. 
Mr. Kevis or, or Mr. Feller, I'm not sure who is going to answer this, but are we set, are, are, when these parking signs that you're talking about, are they wayfinding signs so people know where this parking is, or is it just the parking signs that are going to be in these lots to designate these spots or public I parking? I believe areas? their parking signs are going to go up to re direct people, but Brad, why don't you? Yes, we'll have uh, our, our round parking sign P. For example, at Taco Bell, as you're heading down Pacific Coast Highway, right before you get to Taco Bell, you'll have a P with an arrow so that points you into the parking lot. And then within the parking lot, we'll have both signage and stenciling that directs patrons to the right public spaces. Okay, thank you. Just one question about the process of dealing with the United States government to, to secure parking spots. Can Maybe you guys can fill me in on a little bit what that process was like. Well, and again, it's the efforts of Ms. Nelson to reach out directly. This one, uh, which is unique, is that it was all about relationships and Cindy's reaching out to the local postmaster. And I think the fact that the car show was such a success, the postmaster saw that, and uh, it was quickly elevated up to Washington and the staff there felt that $33 and some change was a very uh, generous offer and uh, they were very quick to turn around and provide us with the agreement that's before you. And quite candidly, I've never seen the federal government operate that quickly. And so again, I, I wanna thank Cindy and Ursula and the entire team for working so diligently with the property owners. And again, these are, these are property negotiations and uh, I, I feel really good about the fact that we're identifying public parking in the near term at an affordable price until such time as we have a, uh, a, a local business and commercial base that can afford a parking district. If I'm not correct, is this the most centrally located parking lot we, we have we've acu uh, acquired rights to at this point? That's correct. It's right in the heart of Del Prado. Well, for the questions, any for the questions of staff, council members? Well, then we'll move on to the public comments portion. We do have one speaker to tonight. To tonight. Mayor, Mayor Thomas, if I could just add, and I think this is important, is that Mr. Killebrew handed me a note, and, and, and I really like the way sometimes Mr. Killebrew lands the plane, uh, is that with tonight's agreement, we're going to have 74 spaces, which was previously identified, which is equivalent to two surface parking lots. So in essence, with tonight's action, you are in fact adding the equivalent of two surface parking lots in the town center. And uh, again, as we move forward, and I have every hope that we'll have an agreement back before you that will, in essence, basically add another public parking lot, so uh, surface lot. So again, I got my fingers crossed, but again, I want to thank Ursula and Cindy for working so diligently with the business community and the property owners to make this happen. Would I be correct in making the statement that these parking lots that we've acquired leases to are evenly distributed out through the city so that multiple users can use them for the businesses located on either the south end, the north end, or the central part of town? Yes, and we are continuing to attempt to do that. East or west, thank you. Our local historians corrected me. Um, Okay, moving on to public comments. So, oh. Sir, we'd need a motion and a council action. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'll forgive you. We have one speaker. Patricia Short, please. <laughs> Good evening, council members, Mr. Mayor, members of the staff. Hey, there's no audience. Oh, well. Um, <clears throat> my name is Patricia Short. Uh, I've been, been a resident of Dana Point for 36 years. I moved here when I was four. Um, <clears throat> I'm here to support and encourage the council to vote yes on the approval of the licensing agreement with the U.S. Post Office for shared public parking in their lot on Del Prado. <clears throat> it is a positive and, pro and proactive step towards making the Lantern District vision created in 2008 a reality. Your approval of this agreement and others like it demonstrate your commitment to address the concerns of the nearby neighbors who, f of those nearby neighbors who fear strangers will park on their streets and demonstrate the park once philosophy of the proposed parking plan is viable. <coughs> Do not be intimidated nor derailed by the vitriol, personal attacks, libelous accusations, and threats presented by 
those individuals who want to stop or deny progress, invalidate the plan, stifle business, and re revise the rules. I encourage you to stay the course and vote yes to approve the agreement. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I move back to the council for any questions, clarification, comments, discussion. Uh, no comments, Mr. Mayor. I just want to make a motion to for approval of the license agreement with the United States Postal Service for use of parking as shared public parking at 24551 Del Prado, Dana Point. Second that. Any discussion? Seeing none, please cast your vote. The motion passes four to zero. I do have a question of staff. Uh, you know, I, I think there's a lot of developing technologies coming into town and, and in the foreseeable horizon, uh, particularly private entrepreneurial outfits like Uber and Lyft. Mm -hmm. um, there's probably more on the horizon that we haven't thought of yet, but I think that's could be a great resource for the city to look into. And I know we've kind of discussed a little bit, but what progress have we made on looking at companies like that and giving them a spot? I noticed that if you check on the app, they're oftentimes floating around town. And what what can we do to provide maybe some of these private entrepreneurs a spot to, to provide services to residents of our city? You know, uh, good point, uh, Mr. Tomlinson. If I could uh, just uh, add to that and respond. Um, about six, seven months ago, my 25-year-old daughter introduced my Wi-Fi to Uber. And what's neat about Uber is it's allowing us to go outside of the community whereby we didn't go before because of the inconvenience of having to find parking and to pay for parking. And what's nice about Uber is for a very affordable rate, probably less than what you would find, you would pay a valet in Laguna Beach or Newport Beach, uh, you get delivered to the doorstep and they pick you up. And, one night, my wife and I, and, and I could, I, since I've been here 15 years, I've probably been to Laguna Beach um, no, no more than five or fewer times just because of the inconvenience of going to Laguna Beach, having to find a place to park, having to pay to park. Where we went, we're able to go have dinner, come back. And what was interesting when I was waiting for the Uber ride on, to pick us up on Coast Highway, I was talking to a Laguna Beach police officer. And we were talking about it, and he said Uber's great because it really takes a strain off police resources. But having said that, he said we try and work with the drivers to find convenient places to pick up and drop off off of PCH so they don't become an obstacle to traffic. So what we did is we came back, and I spoke with Ursula and uh, Cindy, and Cindy initiated a dialogue with Uber and Lyft to see if we can't find parking spaces that can be used as drop-off and pick-up pick points uh, off of Del Prado and off of PCH. So one, they don't interfere with the existing parking, they don't interfere with the through traffic, but uh, you know we're looking at the, the streets of Ruby, uh, Violet, Amber, between Del Prado and PCH. And so I know Ms. Nelson and Ursula are, are engaged with those dialogues, and, and I'm hoping that uh, um, you know, we have something coming forward soon. But with, I think what's also important is, you know, we talked, you know, Mr. Bowen and Council Member Mill have read the high price of parking. I, I, I'm not, I don't read that much as they do, but I have to tell you, in the last 18 months, and you look at how getting to and from a point has changed with the development and the arrival of Uber and Lyft, where it's more convenient to, to order up a ride from Uber and Lyft. And, and I think what's interesting is when you look at a lot of uh, yellow, yellow taxi services basically going out of business because they can't compete for whatever reason. Having said that, it's a convenient way of getting to and from that I think you're going to see more and more people take advantage of. And so uh, I'm really curious to see over the long haul what impact that has on public parking needs because these vehicles are constantly en route picking and dropping, picking people up and dropping them off, and they don't require parking. So I think it's going to be an interesting issue, but I know staff is dialoguing with both Uber and Lyft to identify those locations and possibly come up with an economic incentive to get more people to take Uber and Lyft as opposed to parking 
Um, and so, uh, again, it's a dynamic that's unfolding in real time, but staff is already out in front of that. Ursula, anything you want to add? The only thing I'll add, if uh, you really want to talk about some progressive technology that's going to be here, I think, before we're probably ready for it. I was at a planning conference, and it was a whole big session, and it's the self-driving car. Um, and that's actually a, a reality that's going to be here in less time than we all think. And that's really going to change the dynamic as well of public parking um, because you will have these cars that can literally drop you off and go start taking other people other places. Um, so there's a lot changing technology-wise, and we are looking at Uber and Lyft. And at some point, we'll, cities uh, everywhere are going to have to start looking at how they're going to accommodate self-driving cars. And self-driving cars also take uh, smaller parking spaces. So you can fit more cars in the same space. They can park closer together? Or they can, because oh. you don't need to get in and out of them any longer. Very interesting. Um, Follow-up question. I know um, that I was speaking with one of the restaurateurs that um, Cindy Fleming mentioned uh, was uh, Craft House and how they, I think they've started, a, you know, looking at starting a program where they can, you know, get people to sign up with Uber and they get some, you know, some introductory things. Are there other restaurateurs and, and commercial enterprises using that advantage? Are they, um, I mean, how do, we, how do we get people to recognize that technology? I guess that has to come from the business owner themselves. Well, I think um, if Craft House is successful with that, you know, pushing out and the promotion, the other restaurateurs will look at that success, and the city would certainly be um, helpful in spreading that message to those other business owners as well. And we've, we've started to have some of those discussions, and I think that it's just a matter of time because it really does offer a great convenience. Chilton, anything to add to that? Do you have any problems with services like that? Have you had many complaints with Uber drivers, Lyft drivers in town? Uh, no, we have very, uh, I can't even recall a complaint with uh, that type of service in the area. Yeah. You know, but, but candidly, from a law enforcement standpoint, I'll just say it. Um, it's a responsible way to get to and from a restaurant or a nightclub and not worrying about having too much to drink and getting behind the wheel of a car. You know, in my world, nobody has an excuse now for drunk driving. When you look at Uber and Lyft, uh, which has a huge, a huge impact on public safety. So again, um, anytime we can get impaired people off the road or people who are right on the, the cusp of becoming impaired, there is no gray area with Uber and Lyft. And you get, you get to and from your place responsibly so I think from a public standpoint anything we can do to encourage the use of uber and Lyft will have traumatic you know, it will have a, a dramatic impact on public safety down the road well I personally think that it's a great service and a technology that wasn't available several years ago so I think we're going to see more technology becoming readily available to help us with parking in, in, in the downtown area in the Atlanta district so anyways I'll conclude my comments on that thank you can that self-driving car just drive right back home and we won't need parking for it at all right and we won't need as many squad cars out patrolling because right I mean they'll be driving themselves around we can limit put a governor on them I like that okay just want to ask a question okay um, is there any comments from uh, shock hey base any uh, yes just one brief comment to my right is uh, Alicia Patterson, our deputy city attorney. You don't oftentimes get to see Alicia, but she does a lot of the work that goes on behind the scenes. And I would be remiss if I didn't give her heartfelt congratulations on her upcoming wedding <laughs> later this month. So uh, uh, congratulations, Alicia. But more importantly, thank you for everything you do behind the scenes. I really appreciate it. Any, uh, any comments with that introduction? Any comments or reports from you? I have nothing to report. Thank you, okay. Mr. Gebbies. <laughs> Council member reports. We'll start with Mr. Olivera. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll, this uh, this weekend, I was uh, a volunteer on uh, Saturday for the for the bike race, and and uh, I found that uh, bike racing was really kind of exciting, as uh, Mr. Fowler was there all the time, keeping track of what was going on and what should have been. Uh, not going on, meaning we had a car on the racetrack. Um, so the ability for us to close off Del Prado uh, was really great and, and enhanced the, the ability for us to have the race. 
which leads me to the uh, investment of what we did to upgrade the town center uh, into the destination of the Landering District is really nice. And some refer to that as uh, taxpayer dollars, which are not all taxpayer dollars are paid by the residents. Uh, we are fortunate, as was mentioned during earlier testimony, uh, during our planning commission interviews, that we are fortunate to have transient occupancy tax. And during this project, we did not have to borrow uh, any money as it came from the excess revenues that we've had over the years to the, through the TOT. Um, as a volunteer on the project, I was a lot of people came up to me and, and was talking to me and providing a lot of positive comments about um, how Del Prado looked and, and uh, how we're looking forward to some of the car shows that are coming up in one in July and then uh, the Woody Wood in, in October, the October Wood uh, that's coming up also as a car show. So I hope everybody gets out there and, and uh, participates in all the activ activities. We have the uh, uh, walk of cultural walk that's coming up uh, shortly. And so, so I hope people come out there and visit our businesses. Thank you. Mr. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I want to thank the Orange County Fire Authority for coming out this week, this past weekend. Uh, was it la this weekend or last weekend? It was last weekend, I'm sorry. Um, and doing the smoke detector installs over in Beechwood Village. Uh, Capital Valley Christian School and Dana Point High School, uh, Dana Hills High School were also involved in that. The students came out and they installed over, they installed 226 smoke detectors in 85 homes. And I just want to say thank you for spending that time and helping our residents be, be safer. Um, and so I wanted to report that that program went out and I will turn in my list of meetings to the clerk. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, I have nothing to report. I'll turn in my list of meetings after this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question for the Madam Clerk. Would you like our ballots for these? Would you like them for the record? Yes, Anything? please. Yes, okay. And I will also turn in my list of meetings to the clerk. And I have no further comments. Thank you. With that, I officially adjourn tonight's meeting with the next regular meeting of the City Council being May 17th at 5 o'clock in, the, in these chambers. So hope to see you there. Thank you. Mm -hmm.